Hi guys, this is Neil. Welcome back to my channel. Today I will be painting a more complex version of the kiwi slice. Unlike the doodle version, this will all be done with watercolors and no pen to outline, but it is still very simple, just a lot of repetitive shapes painted in a radial pattern on a few layers. So I will be using a bit more colors compared to the first one. The shapes are still very simple to follow, so I won't be drawing it out first. I'm going to go straight with painting, and like the first video, I'll be using a mix of permanent green and aurelin yellow, but if your green is a little bit too cool in terms of the temperature, you can also add either a touch of orange or a little bit of vermilion to mix into the green to warm up the temperature. For the second layer, I'm going to be adding a touch of Hooker's Green, which is a deep and dark green color, to darken the first color mixture just by a touch. The third color mix will be for the skin, and for that I'm going to use a mixture of Yellow Ochre with a touch of Ivory Black to mute the color. Then for the last color mix, I'm going to use a mixture of ivory black with a touch of hooker's green for the seeds. You can just use the ivory black, but I find that giving a green hue to the black seeds softens the black color so it doesn't stand out too much against the light green kiwi. So those are the colors. Now I'm going to go straight into making the donut shape with this color, but aren't like the first video where I was just making a flat wash. I want this one to have a slightly darker edge and to do this I'm going to load my brush with a very thick consistency paint and paint the larger circle first. Then I clean my brush to get rid of the excess paint and if the paint that you've put down is still really wet you can just use the paint from that and pull the paint inwards to create the donut shape while leaving the center of the kiwi white or if the paint that you initially put down isn't too wet after you clean your brush make sure you also reload your brush with water only without any more paint and then you can use that to reactivate the paint from the outer circle inwards. Just like the first doodle, I'm not going to make a perfect circle. It's alright if some of the sides are a touch uneven because no fruit is the perfect circle shape. So that's basically the first layer. I'm going to do this for the rest of the page and distribute them around. You can also play with the size slightly if you want to create a little bit of variation. If some parts of the outer circle isn't dark enough or the paint didn't distribute well enough while the paint is still wet, you can actually load your brush with a thicker consistency paint and add on to the wet surface. Note that this won't work very well if the surface is puddling wet, so make sure you take the excess water off first before adding paint. And to do this, you can use a clean dry brush to absorb the excess water. You can also do this to absorb excess paint that you want to erase if the surface is still wet.
Going on to the second layer now, I'm making sure that the first layer is first completely dry so the next layer won't bleed out. When you put wet paint on a wet surface, the paint will spread. So you want to make sure that it's completely dry, not even cold to the touch. Before you move on to the second layer, make sure you use your finger to feel the surface first. And if you're ready to move on to the second layer, but you can feel that the paper is still wet, you can always use a hair dryer to help speed up the drying process. For this layer, I added a touch of hooker's green, which is a dark green color into the previous light green mix. But depending on the ratio, you will get different shades of green. So if you're not too confident with your color mixing yet, you can swatch the colors on scrap paper first to make sure that you've created the right color that you want. I used to do this a lot when I was new to painting with watercolors because I'm never too sure about what I've mixed on the palette. So always swatch first if you're unsure. It's always easier to paint too light than too dark because it's harder to take off paint compared to layering more. So just be mindful of that. For this next step, I loaded my brush with a slightly medium to light consistency and instead of lines like in the previous video, this time I'm going to be painting uh, long teardrop shapes all around the white circle at the center. So the edge near the white circle comes to a point while the other side is rounded and I'm going to rotate my sketchbook along while doing this so I can be more comfortable with the position while painting the correct angles. To do this step you can actually switch to a smaller brush if it's still a bit hard for you to control the larger brush. If you're sticking to the same brush size though make sure that when you load your brush with water, the brush isn't too wet so you won't paint puddles when you're creating the small teardrop shapes because larger brushes hold more water so you're more prone to creating the puddles. So keep that in mind before you decide on the brush that you're going to use for the rest of the steps. Now I'm going to move on to the next step and for this I'm going to use the same color and I'm going to paint thin lines align to the larger circle and again you can switch to a smaller brush for this but it may also be good brush control exercise if you stick to the same brush size so work according to your level or use this as a chance to practice.
next I'm going to be painting the skin off the kiwi and for this I'm going to mix in yellow ochre with a tiny bit of black only to mute the yellow ochre slightly. For this I'm going to paint all around the kiwi using the yellow ochre mix just like an outline to the kiwi. Once I'm done with the outline for the skin, I'm going to add a fun detail to the kiwi and that's to paint the fur on the skin. I'm using the exact same color and I'm going to use the tip of my brush. You may also use a smaller brush for this. I also tried switching to a smaller brush but I feel like I prefer using the larger brush so I don't have to reload my brush too often. For this part, I'm just painting really tiny lines going at random directions, even horizontal, but mostly vertical to create a furry texture. While doing this, I'm thinking about keeping it nice and sparse instead of creating really dense fur which will make the painting look heavier. So I make sure to leave enough space in between some of the fur lines and I try to not be too caught up in one small area and instead keeping my hands nice and light to give a rather even but light distribution. The final step is to paint the seeds and for this I'm going to switch to a small brush because I want the seeds to be small and delicate. For this I used a mix of hooker screen and ivory black to lighten the black a little bit and I'm going to paint the seeds all around the white part of the kiwi slice and then slowly dispersing the rest of the seeds further away from the center. As it gets further and further, I put less seeds so it looks like it's slightly disappearing outwards. The seeds can either be painted as dots or slight ovals, and if I paint them as ovals, I like to direct them in the same direction as the long teardrop shapes that I previously painted for the second layer. So that's basically it. I'm going to apply this to all of the kiwis and we're pretty much done. So that's it for this video. This is the completed pattern. I hope you enjoyed this as well as last week's kiwi pattern. I just decided to do this thinking that it'll be a nice exercise for those of you who are new to watercolors to start off with a very basic doodle and then moving on to painting a more detailed version of the same subject. And if you're new here, I will link the previous doodle at the end screen so you can use it as a warm-up or just as a quick doodle for the day. Anyway, if you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I will see you at the next video. Bye!